welcome to another episode of the Musicians Talk Show podcast. It is episode 83. I think we have a fun one for you today. I'm Dallas DeWhite. And I'm Matt Tolley. And we have our good friend, Matt Cullen. Say hey, Matt Cullen. Hey, guys. How are you doing today? Doing good. Doing, great, doing good. Better Thanks so here. much for being on the show. We've already I, missed a good story when we, before we start to turn the mics on. We yeah. already had a good one. We just, I, I had to interrupt and say, let's let's start recording. Yeah. <laughs> Matt Matt had a really good Pantera story. We were just talking about Vinnie Paul, and then we got into Pantera shows. And, and you saw, saw so many early. of those bands early on, didn't you? Well, first of all, guys, um, is swearing a lot on this podcast. I am from New Jersey. It's and encouraged. I, and, I, and I'm not. Uh, <laughs> Allowed and encouraged. Okay, thanks. I just wanted to get that uh, uh, get that off the table. <laughs> yeah, we should, we should have um, covered that before. Yeah, we were just talking about that. Uh, obviously, I'm old, and that's uh, that's the first thing. So I got to see a lot of the classic heavy metal bands that came through New York and New Jersey. Um, they had to. They called it the metal proving ground. So yeah. we had clubs around there where you could see the startups and, you know, you know, in earlier, smaller venues before they blew wide open. Right. And we would catch all those groups. So Pantera was one of them. God, I wish I could have. And uh, we, we didn't even know. Like I said, we didn't even know. We yeah, they were the opening the band. You guys just well, walked in some. We, we ran out of beer uh, in, the, in, the, <laughs> in the, you know, parking lot or whatever. And so we had to go in and see the opening act, which wasn't always our practice. And we walked straight into and stood in front of um, Pantera on their opening Cowboys from Hell tour. Yeah, Diamond Phil. It was. It was Vinny and. Rex, man, that must have been that must have been killer. I wish I could have seen that. Yeah, it was that's uh, crazy. Yeah, it made an impression on us. I have all their albums to this day. My yep. ringtone yeah. on my phone is "Walk." Yeah, so. it is. Yeah. Yeah. I remember nice. that now. Nice, <laughs> hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna ask you, 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 like in those days, you saw so many bands that came to be really, really big, right? Yeah. Did you know it when you were, when you would see a band? Were you like, okay, these guys are gonna be superstars, or were they already like big enough to where it was pretty obvious, or was it like, did you ever see like an underground band? No one was there. Nobody gave a shit, and you could tell, like, these guys are going to be good. Um, or was it all, like, you know, 1,500 people, like, they were already clearly on the way? Out on their tours, most of it was that, um, gotcha. that they, they had been out there. Maybe maybe it was us who just didn't know that they were big yet. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we stayed with a lot of the mainstays. We got to see, you know, Judas Priest touring with Iron Maiden, and we got to see um, Sabbath. We got to see Dio in the clubs. We got to mm -hmm. see Megadeth and Metallica coming up very early and, uh, Motorhead was still running around. Um, and they always carried some really good bands with them. Nice. Um, Ozzy blew up and, you know, and, of course. You know, right. So we, he just got so big a stadium tour. I saw a couple of those too. Yeah. Nice. And then we stuck to the classics. There were some old, uh, bands out there. The old the Jay Giles, the, the, the Southside Johnny's, the, mm -hmm. um, Nice. Uh, just a whole bunch of the classic rock bands, the Coop and uh, and everything. We, we we like Purple. Hell, we saw Quiet Riot and at a silly festival, and and then you got to go see it like Peter Frampton with Blue Oyster Cult or right. um, uh, or Kansas. All right, like that in Kansas, a very small dude. venue with Steppenwolf. That's you know? interesting. Like I, like at one of those uh, summertime pool resort type of things, they throw up stage yeah. beer venues, and we could go, and you'd be real close, and you'd get to really see it. Dude, I'm That's glad you crazy. said Kansas. Kansas is an underrated band, I feel like, Kansas man. They played, are a serious musician. They played in, like, Lancaster, like, 2017, 16, 18. I'd love to see them. If they, like, like a tiny little amphitheater oh, I'd love in the to middle go see of them. nowhere. You see them come around again or something. I don't know who it is. It can't be all the original it might members. Be Kansas. But, uh, but anyways, like, I think that band is so, like, musicianship off the charts, man. It's yeah, crazy. I think they were... Maybe technically classified as prog. Even, they think right? they are prog rock. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's crazy. Anyways, you want to get into a weekend review a little bit? I know we got yeah. Let's talk about what did. Uh, let's start with you, uh, Matt. Uh, for for clarity, <laughs> I'm going to be calling Matt Cullen Cullen, <laughs> and our intrepid host Matt. <laughs> yes. Well, just to keep it uh, congruent, I guess yeah. we've always called me Matt. We need to change it up. So here's the thing. Uh, this weekend, all I've done is prep for next weekend's show. Uh, we had an awesome practice this past last weekend. Week. You mean that's what you did? Well, yeah, yeah, nice. yesterday, technically. Like, like, just rehearsals and stuff? Yeah, rehearsal and also just prepping for the show, getting, um, which is funny, prepping for the show. Ah. Uh, but uh, getting shirts and stuff, trying to do, cross all okay. the eyes, you all know, right. cross all the eyes, dot my T's, you know how it goes. Logistics. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, so doing that kind of stuff, it's well, been well, running around. Well, the show real quick for everybody. Oh, yeah, yeah, so now. Amos is uh, October 4th, Friday. This is coming from Come out, yeah, 8 o'clock, we, we'll, we'll probably start around like 8.15-ish, but, uh. Uh, then we're gonna we're opening for uh, Metallica tribute band Ride the Lightning, which is really okay. cool, and they're awesome. This is your band, Matt. Yeah, yeah, Prep and Barium. Prep and Barium. Yep. At Amos, you're opening up. Yep, we're opening up for Amos's first time we've ever played there, which is awesome, and we get to open up for a Metallica tribute, which I've always thought was a killer idea. Yeah. Because they fill the bill. First of all, people come out for a Metallica tribute. People come out for a tribute period because you have the the drawing power exactly. of, of a of big Metallica, name. Yeah. right? Of, I mean, like that's what you have. So, 
um, when I promote the show on Facebook and Instagram and stuff, I use Metallica's, you know, like if anybody who likes Metallica, like show them yeah, this ad, you know, that's like an this, easy yeah. one, easy yeah, one, right? Yeah, that's, yeah. so, I mean, that's a big, that's a big, uh, exactly. big group so, people. and then they've been really cool. Um, and you know, it's, I just feel it's good exposure. We're really excited about it. And that's all I'll say. Come what's, out. What's the date? October 4th, next Friday. October 4th. Cool. So yes, rehearsals sir. went well. Yeah, excellent. Uh, Drew's picked up the bass parts. Awesomely, oh yeah, that's like, what I was going to. Extremely was quickly, about, yeah. and uh, and David is on fire. The kid plays drums like nobody's business, and Kyle's obviously getting better every day. He's always improving, and I love I was that. killing it. Yeah. So it's going to be a great I, show. I always forget you guys are four piece. I keep thinking. Yeah. Are, I keep thinking like, yeah, who's the fifth guy again? I yeah, can't yeah. remember his name. That'd be me. It's like yeah, because he's not there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I play guitar and sing, so I, I don't feel as bad. Try and pull double duty on that one. Yes, yeah, so you guys have the Metallica lineup. Yeah, right. it's gonna be well, fun. Right? I guess more like the darkness. It's like, it's like, yeah, exactly. Because you do the leads. It's as well. more like the darkness, yeah. right? I would say that's yeah. It's I'm fun always though, trying to be... compare like lineups to I know like, famous I do that lineups. too. I do that too because it's yeah. like, what does it take to be a good band? It's not like necessary to be yeah. like five piece, four piece. Some three pieces are awesome, like Rush. You know, like mm-hmm. crazy. You know combination to people uh liquid tension experiment i think is only a four piece and they are incredible maybe they might be They're a three piece. no though, singer right? though yeah no singer so that's what i thought that yeah, makes so it have, easier i guess uh keys drums guitar and and bass so it's three well some of the no, bands four, go through three. their go through their periods right. and they and they change they start as a three piece look at government mule with Warren Haynes right and, out and then you get another and, member or something and it changes the way the whole right thing. right or and lose and a then member. let's throw keys in for these two albums and then uh, you kind of you evolved. That's the story of uh, Dream Theater, actually. Uh, Jordan well, they Lewis, had, who we had on the show, he uh, wasn't in Dream Theater at first, like for the first two albums. Yeah, yeah, but they had a keyboard player. They had a it keyboard player. It was Derek Sherinian. Oh, yeah. okay, okay, sorry. Derek Sherinian, who plays with uh, Black Country Communion and so many other people. Okay, okay, yeah. sorry. Is that I'm the Glenn Hughes that. thing? Yeah, yeah. I have like four of those albums. Mm-hmm. I hope, yeah, I, they're I, all I, good. Yeah, BCC. They are yeah. good with uh, Bonamassa on it. Bonamassa, right? it's a super group. Nice. So it's Glenn Hughes, Joe Bonamassa, Derek Sherinian, oh, and Jason Bonham on drums. I need to check that. I've heard that name, but I've never checked them out. Excellent. Yeah, all, all of it's good. Cool. And I mean, anytime Glenn Hughes is involved, Pretty much. I'm on board. <laughs> hell yeah, hell yeah. Dallas, that Dallas, Dallas and I have a Glenn Hughes. Oh, uh, I see, I see. You guys are There's, crushing hard. He can just do no wrong. Like, I got I've, you. I've heard I know so many stories of the engineers that worked with him. They said uh, for the California Breed album, which was the band name, mm-hmm. and I think the album name as well, it was like a one-off thing he did with some dudes. It was a trio. Jason Bonham, him, and this like unknown guitar player who's pretty young. He's like 25 or something. Andrew something. I don't remember his last what? name. What? Uh, maybe yeah. I, I like him a lot. I've heard yeah, him. Yeah. Yeah. It's him. So California He's breed, breaking. big, big hair. Yeah. yeah big orange him. hair. Yep. Yeah. So Glenn Hughes kind of, to my understanding, kind of broke him through that band. Cool. Cause he hadn't done anything. Oh, and Glenn met he him after the show. Post-blown. and was like, I like this kid. He reminds me of me when I was young. Right. Right. And oh, so, that's interesting. So we'll talk about that them, later. Yeah. The three of them did that band, but cool. I heard interviews with like the, the engineer that did those sessions. They said the way they record is really interesting. They record live. But Glenn plays bass and sings. Okay. But he doesn't track bass with the band. You would you would think you would record right. the instruments and overdub the vocals. He does it the other way around. Oh, that's he interesting. He sings with the band and then overdubs that's the bass. That's interesting because then you get the vibe of the yeah. singing. Yeah. But yeah. but, but then also how do you he cut? would do two takes. How do you think he isolates? Well, he's probably in his own booth. Okay. But yeah, he is hearing headphones. the band yeah. live right now. They're jamming. They're yeah, vibing. Sure. Right? He probably sees them through glass. And then they play the bass later. He does the bass later. I wonder how the band yeah. feels about playing to no bass. You know? it's, it's kind of supplemental in that right, point. Right, right. Like I, Glenn Hughes is such a good singer that I totally forget he even plays bass most right. of the time. Go back to his old stuff that he did with Iomi, with Tony. That stuff's great. That's not it, old, though. I mean, he goes back to, like, like the early 60s with, like, Trapeze. Uh, yeah, yeah. Deep Purple uh, well, Mark III. Right. Like, you know. Another awesome singer so that you forget things. plays bass is uh, Phil L- uh, Linnett. Yep. He's, he always, I always forget. He's Oh, yeah, he's the bass player. Like, he's doing yeah. all those... Doom, do, 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 oh, uh, like uh, um, Thin Lizzy, right? Oh, yeah, Thin yeah, Lizzy, dude. exactly. Yeah, I don't know the names of the guys know, in that band oh, as well. So I know the guy with the fro. What's his name? That's Phil. Phil. Oh, yeah. that's him. He's oh, a he's bass player and so he's singer. the main guy. Right. Got it. Well, and they had a lot of different like shredder guitar players come yeah. and play with them. Yeah. So it's yeah, like they had different. Robertson. He uh, he was with them for years, and then uh, he went over to, did an album with uh, they had, Lemmy. They, they had the, Gary Moore. They had Gary Moore. Eric. Super famous for yeah. being awesome. <laughs> we had uh, we had the one on our uh, uh, Eric Bell. Music. He was on the, he was uh, on the, the, the solo, uh, solo of the week. Yep. Solo of the week thing. So. He's not a big fan of that one. You don't like I that one. You, made made me sit through you that. thought that one was over bluesy and and extended. Didn't need to be that long. long. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was like eight minutes long. Matt's but like, check this out. Oh, I think like, oh, I think the audacity of it and the song's called the Rocker. So I was like, I was like, this is it. Like. 
I, I love. I, I love that it was like a verse, and then like the half of the song is a solo. guitar solo. Like, <laughs> <laughs> nothing to do with the Thin Lizzy song, the rocker. Yeah, no, that's that what I'm talking about. Yeah, and it was, I, I that entered song. that. Yeah. I like it too. And, and Dallas, didn't think, he thought the solo was just too long. He thought I just it was have like, to take the contrarian. Look at my bike. He caught. You want to go for a ride? I love it. For you, I love it. I come. You're a rocker. You're a rocker. But I wanted. I want. I brought up the Lin Hughes recording thing to say that several people he's worked with at Tractor over the years said that he he gives he gives like one or two takes. Yeah. And then they're usually like, we're good. We got the whole song. It's done. We, it's perfect. We know how like, that goes. We've talked about it. It's not about, even like, it's not even like, let's punch the verse. He sings start to finish right. the entire song twice and they have right. everything they need. Right. But they cut in and out, maybe take the best verse one. They might do a little bit of comedy. You know, yeah. I bet there's some of that, but it, sure. we talked about it before. Like your best takes come from your first and second takes. Like but that's so crazy. Afterwards, that's unheard of. Yeah. Like, afterwards, you're, you're better off waiting a day and then coming out again. If you couldn't get the take that you, that you feel like you got. Don't sit there and just hammer it over and over and over yeah. again. You're better off waiting till the next day, come back. Maybe it's just not your day. You know what I mean? It could yeah, be that. You're like, true. listen, I've sang this shit before. I know I can do this. Yeah. This isn't cutting it. Instead Dallas, of you've, burying... sent, you've sent me away. <laughs> it works. We're going to try well, that no, song it's... tomorrow. You sent me away from, the, from the studio. Yeah. Sometimes. You We're can really... get overworked. Yeah. You can definitely be like burnt out on trying new things and, and then you'll just get in your own head about it. Like, And then your voice wears out. It's obviously. also really bad if you if you hurt your voice too. Right. Then now you have to take like two exactly. weeks off. You know, exactly. So it's better off to just cut your losses, you know, fold basically. It's like a fucking poker game. Yeah, fold exactly. <laughs> fold. Like come that. back tomorrow. Okay, so that was your weekend review with yes. some tangents. I love the tangents. Cullen, what was your what was your weekend like? Oh, same old week. I traveled somewhere. I worked. You guys play home. a show, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we um uh, so uh, did the job. Uh, came back and um we had a we did have a um a gig yesterday for a friend of ours turned fifty. Awesome. Um, and um he had four bands there. It's Tommy's birthday today, right? Uh, that's in my phone calendar for some reason. Oh gosh, I called base, him before and told him, I called him before and I insulted him as friends do and left him a message and I did not say happy birthday. Thank you very much, Dallas. <laughs> that's so funny. Well, uh, shout him out on the podcast. Well, shout so him out right now. He's like, like oh, happy Matt birthday, me to say happy Tom, birthday. Bass player for 50 year rebellion, Tom Tesoro. You are a great guy and uh, you've gotten a year older. I love, happy birthday, I love, Tommy. I love the idea. <laughs> shout of, out, bro. It's his birthday. You call him. He thinks like, oh hell yeah, Matt called oh, yeah, me. Wish me happy birthday. And instead, it's like you fucking suck, you dick. And you won't repeat what I said to him. That's um, so because, funny. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's like, well, I guess that wasn't my birthday call. Yeah, it's, it's not <laughs> if, necessary. I, if I told you what I said to him, it wouldn't be his. No. Nah. Oh, okay. There you go. That's right. So well, I mean, we, we, we got in a lineup. There were four bands there yesterday <sighs> at the Red Fest Shrine Club down on uh, Lake Wiley. And uh, a friend rented out the pavilion. So it was outside during the day. It was uh, it was pretty. And um, Rockaholics uh, opened up. They're local. They, they've been playing around. And then uh, we did. Like uh, covers kind of stuff? Yeah, or is this cover band. Bands? Yep, they opened up um, Classic Rock. And then and then we played after them. Um, did pretty good. Did were a, you doing all your original stuff? Or no, we stuff? did a couple originals. And then we did some old Robin Trower. We did some ZZ oh, cool. Top. So cool. Had slide out. So, Hell yeah. yeah. We did Just Got Paid and uh, Beer Drinkers. Oh, I love that. Just you got guys paid. love that song, Just Got Paid, man. I'm I, not a I, fan. I feel like that's an underrated song because I've it liked uh, ZZ Top for a long time. I only found out about that song like later. That's about it. It's tough. The stops and some of the stuff. Bum, the chop bum, and the chop bum, guitar. Here's, bum, bum, here's what bugs me about ZZ Top. Bum, bum. When they're soloing, they stay on the same chord for way too long, dude. <laughs> It'll be like G, 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 G. You're like, here comes C, G, G, G. Stay on G, 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 G. It's like, dude, like 16 bars of G. Beer drinkers. They're, they're heavily, like, uh, like, beer drinkers is that. You know something <laughs> yeah. Something about them, too? They're heavily Jimi Hendrix influenced. Like, you hear yeah. it in their soloing and you hear it in their, in their songwriting. Yeah, uh, for sure. I and I've saw some interview. Who knows what it was or where? Jimi but, Hendrix would tell you that he was heavily influenced, also. By exactly, those guys. of course, okay. of course. And they they were from the same area, so they all uh, saw each other all the time. And uh, I saw some interview with them, and they they were like, "Oh, every time we saw him, we just soaked up as much as we could. We felt like it was a free guitar lesson. We were just like <laughs> soaking it in, which I thought was so cool because they really admired him, you know." That's awesome. And then, and then after that, the guy who turned fifty, he had a band in college, so his friends came in, and they. You know, we all practice at Paul's on Friday nights. So right. Kind of a shit show, just pulling it all together. <laughs> um, and they pulled together a, a, a short set. That was, And they were fun. And it was great. They had a great time. It was, the whole vibe was... Everybody's gonna make mistakes, you know. Uh, you know, whatever. Sure. Mm -hmm. And we just had a it's great a good vibe. Good people came, and then um, the closing band, which I thought was Lipstick on a Pig, um, <sighs> local guys. Um, yeah, Foz does those guys. Right, and and well, I think they're called Reckless. They had a female lead singer. She was unbelievable. And, oh, nice. And, uh, yeah, the drummer was a monster. Bass player. I think the bass player and the lead singer, uh, Janet, and Mickey. They're a uh, married couple, and then the, uh, the guitar player is great. Anyway, they came somewhere out of the lipstick and uh, out of, of a pig lineup, and I think they called themselves Reckless. Cool. Um, so it was fun, and we drank some beer. Yeah, Matt, you just sing for Fifth Year Rebellion, just for clear for the audience. I 
On our original stuff, yeah. Uh, I did get to pick up a guitar yesterday. Cool. Me and Paul um, blew down uh, <laughs> You Got Another Thing Coming by... Uh, ah, cool. Oh, sure. Paul, Paul, so like what was the song. lineup that played yesterday? Uh, me, Paul, um, Eric, and... Uh, uh, Tommy and, and Brian. Um, so Dave was That's up in lineup. New York State, and, like um, and, and and Jeff wasn't with us yesterday. But uh, it it was a it was a good lineup. Uh, and That's a good I lineup. I got to play some guitar. I got a new guitar, and I don't ever get to play it. Oh, what is it? Uh, it's a PRS. A cool. Oh, that's right. that, yeah. Yeah, so it, uh, I got to play that, and then we had the, the the birthday boy came up and tried to sing Rob Halford. He did fine. It was fun. Cool. cool. <laughs> yeah, it's not. So. Got another thing coming. <laughs> and I got to play guitar. And That's a good yeah. song. It'd be dun, cool. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> yeah, so totally like totally. you guys. Oh, stop. Cool, uh, Dallas. Your week in review, buddy. Yeah, the yawns are starting again. Oh um, no! It's a, I never yawn, and then whenever we start recording, I yawn like eighteen times. I know Perhaps something about I'm the boring. microphone that yeah, induces it's all yawning. It's fault. Um, yeah, we had a good weekend. We had one show. It was a private show. It was the first private event we've played, so we didn't really oh, know what awesome. to expect. It was super cool. It was really intimate. We played to probably 15 people, uh-huh. 20 cool. people, because it's a private event. You know, well, it's like, yeah, it was like where? a house party, basically. It was, it was a, a house, house party? party? Uh, kind of. It was pretty elaborate for a house party. Oh, it was, cool. um, it was up in uh, Greenville, easily, technically, but Greenville, basically, for those of us that aren't familiar with the area. Right. And... Um, they had two locations. It was way out in the country. He had a really, really nice house. And then there was like a barn location, like probably a couple hundred yards away. So we played. He had a stage set up, generators, lights, everything Sweet. for, for the, the area by the barn. And then he had us go to the house and we were, you know, eating catered barbecue and ha. hanging out with all the people. There was a bluegrass band playing. And then we went over to the stage and played from uh, 9 to 11. And then packed up and came home. It was super cool. So they wanted nice. to finish up with some rock and roll. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was weird to play to that few people and, and know that, like, okay, we didn't. This isn't a failure. Like, we weren't bringing people to this. No, this is they just brought right. you. This, this is their yeah, event. This is a very special private thing. So we had. We had to kind of tailor cool, our right? tailor our uh, show to that. Where there's a lot more like talking to people instead of addressing the crowd. Did you, did you get like you know? requests? Did you feel like it ended up being more requests? Well, they had our whole set list, so they so they knew what he you requested. Played. The guy that hired us requested like he picked you know I Out want this songs. one, this one, this one, and then we right. just put them in an order. And played. Excellent, excellent. Some That's guy cool. at the beginning came up. I love it when people walk up to the stage. You have in ears in. You're you're in the middle of playing. It's loud. <laughs> they walk up to the front of the stage. Boston. You're just like, what, dude? Like, get the fuck out of here. Like, all, of a sudden I'm, all of a sudden, I'm seeing myself an old drunk at a cocktail party. Right. Right. We're, we're, willing, we're willing to pay for your young talent. Yeah, you know, yes, like, yes, I, yes. I, I, I'm thinking to, to myself. To be clear, the guy that said Boston was not the guy that hired right, us. The guy that hired paying. us was right. the sweetest guy. He was so cool. Yeah. And yeah, everyone the there was so the accommodating. You guys, they aren't, they, we're not getting any rock and roll like you guys are making. Like, the, it, doesn't, right. you know, it doesn't feel like we have it anymore, and, um, or it's not being made or popular. It, se- it seems miss- on- it's it there. seems to be I think on the I'm hoping on the rise of like being regular again like rock and roll is kind of yeah even people who listen to hip hop and listen to like electronic music are still finding rock and roll that they like which I like um, I don't know how how far it's gonna Ed go. Ed Sheeran how- put out that rock song right right so that's so, kind of an indicator of what right you look where the where the popular people the most popular players are doing. And then that kind of tends to show you what the what the crowd is shifting towards. Or sorry, what. guys, I'm just waiting for this hip hop rap age to be over. <laughs> I you know I found some it's stuff that I like, while, but huh? it, for, it's few and far between for me. So I, that's how right. I know I'm just not a true hip hopper. Right. There's some stuff I like, like actually Andrew Watt did a thing with Post Malone, so it's got a lot of guitar. Oh, really? Stuff in that's it. an interesting. Dude, you should definitely check out. It's called. Um, it's called Post Burning guitar, Man. It's called Burning Man. Sorry, it took me a second to remember what it is. So basically, it's about drugs. But Doesn't it's, Post, Mal- Post Malone play guitar? Pretty sure he does. He plays a little guitar, but on this track, I'm pretty sure he left it to Andrew Watt. It's it's pretty awesome. He's like what a blues shredder, I'd call him, you know? Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't even call him a shredder. I, no, I never heard so him do much, any shredding. It was right. kind of like, you know. Yeah, being really blues and tasteful, yeah. which I like that. So anyways, that was the weekend review. That was the weekend review. Anybody else? Any, got anything else? In, any forgotten anything things? Else I think I'm good. Was... Let's uh let's talk about you want to go right into the main topic I think that why let's Matt Collins here let's do it let's do yeah, it why am I here well we feel you know we've talked about you at length before, uh, before you were obviously on the show but we think that you are an excellent communicator every time we talk to you we gave a good vibe and every, everything's always positive and we feel like uh, but you're also not a bullshitter you also tell like you see it and stuff like that so we just wanted to get you on here to talk about your communication techniques and what you've learned over the years, that kind of thing. Cause we feel like yeah. it could be useful to our listeners yeah. to, to you know, help them like networking, personal yeah, skills. Exactly. And 
Because that applies to just communicating with human beings, which is, of course, a big part of being a musician. Exactly. So. Yeah, you're going to meet so many people along the way. And, and the way you approach talking to people has always been super, you know, it always feels friendly, coming from the right place. And that's, that's great. So you could say basically anything you want to to somebody because people know where you're coming from. You know what I mean? And they, yeah. you know. So that's what we want to kind of talk about you about. Just all, all the things you've learned, you know. Well, um, I appreciate I appreciate that uh, you guys brought me on, and I and I hope I can. I guess I'm assuming a lot of your listeners and um, you know are uh, maybe uh, guys in bands on projects doing you know talented right. people and everything. It's like all that. kinds and, of musicians, yeah, music well, teachers, right. yeah, orchestra and, players. And, 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 and I and I guess the point is so um, when I when I say the talent is the ante, it's why you're even at the table. It's why you're at the game. You know, talk about all, you know all your all the hard work, dedication, all that stuff. Great. And everybody has that. So one of the things I started thinking about when you guys said this is what what's going to set you apart? Um, there's an old Latin term right. called ceteris paribus, I believe it is, and it says other things being equal. What what what? what how are you going to differentiate yourself? Yeah, I love that. Yeah, that's, um, because that's really people awesome. are like, oh, I'm I'm just going to get really good. It's like, okay, well, when right. you get good enough, everybody's good. What, exactly. Everybody's really good. Exactly. I can go get ten really exactly. good guitar players right now. What, which exactly. one am I going to hire? If they're all, you know. Well, and 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 there it is. And 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 you say so. What's so? So what's your, what's your differentiation? It could be something as silly as you got the right look. Right. right? That, and, right. and that's how CC Devo got in poison and yeah. slashed yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. You know? Exactly. I mean, exactly. Uh, look at, and look at the band Ghost. Like their whole look has brought yeah. them a whole you know entire fan base. Right. You know, no matter what they sound like, and they're and they yep. just happen to be great musicians. You know. Right. And, and that that's a whole other thing. But but I but I can tell you uh, I can tell you this that that after that after those factors yes it becomes in part uh, a good set of personal skills Absolutely. will serve you in life on so many levels including every including aspect this. of life right yes. how about just the fact that people like to deal with people who uh are uh friendly and and or, or or just i don't know whatever like people who communicate well and do well you know what i mean like they i don't know i don't know where i was yeah. going with that i guess <laughs> just, i think what you what, what you were referring to before and so i got you know roughly 30 years of sales experience. And so what, the, what that does is put me in front of different people, different kinds of right. people think differently, whether they're an engineer, whether they're uh, uh, an artist, whether they're uh, an operations people. So you have to understand that different people think in different ways. They want more or less technical information. They want to talk about this more. Um, it's just, so you got to know the language that you're pe that you're that you're speaking to. Yeah. So a after that, it, maybe what you said before that I can say what I'm, what I feel because right. I'm coming from the right place. And that, that comes from two things. One, you're really actively listening versus worrying about what you're going to say. Exactly. Next. Waiting for your turn to talk. And, right. And, and you know, we're all guilty of it. That's of one course. of the hardest things to achieve as a human being is to, is to shut yourself off and really lip, listen to somebody. Right. And in there is, you know, empathy. Do you really care? Right. You Putting yourself care. in the other person's you shoes. Yeah. You have to care. It can't all be about you. And that's, and that yeah. comes with the humility. Right. And, and an actual genuine empathy for people yeah. that are around you. And, um, and, and and that's where the mentors come from, but also paying attention. Um, so you talk about going into some place and you and you're going into somebody's office to sell something mm -hmm. or, or or talk about something that you're working with, and you know they train you. You know, look around. You see right. what kind of pictures you see. Where, what's the college emblem? Mm -hmm. What's on the wall? What right. Are they, what are these? Anything things? you can use so to connect your thing to to yes. what they already you found out about them now. Yes. So you're active, observation. You're actively uh, uh, observing. Yes. What um what this person may be sure, about sure. And, and and how to engage that person no, yeah that I'm makes not, so much sense and that's and that's not even cheating that's not like no. that's not weird or skeezy that's literally you're trying to associate with this person Correct. and if you can if you can relate to this person on on any level that's right like if it pops out something stands out to you like oh he's got a kiss poster on the wall i love kiss like and i'm not saying you know like in business maybe who knows but right. you can always connect yourself somehow to somebody if you can just look for it you know look for that common ground <laughs> exactly the common the com the common ground starts that com the com conversation everything like exactly. that and, and you guys talked about before like who was that guy you said that um uh somebody that phil excuse me glenn hughes took under his wing like andrew water i okay. i don't i don't know so, that for so sure but is. i think so i i, I really I, I really wanted to hit on this because i i, I think the um the, the mentor the mentoring thing yes. i know that all my career i have met really good people and i've just presented myself as this just like you guys are He's hardworking. I mean, why am I here? Right. I mean, why, why am I so interested in you guys? And why am I so interested in Dallas? And why is Paul interested in Dallas right. and how we met you guys and everything like that? We see, but look, look, what did you say, Dallas? He reminded me of me when I was young. Right. 
maybe even a better version in certain ways. So when I look at you guys and I see you guys and how hard you work, how dedicated you are, how you know, single-mindedly a sense of purpose and things like that, it, it, I'm inspired. Mm. I want to help that. Mm. And that's how many, many, trust me, older people feel. Right. Yeah. Well, that it, we, we, we want, we love to see somebody who's hardworking, who's going to build something and do something great for themselves. It's just inspiring. As well, if we look at our children that way. That's so interesting to me because it, it's mutual. It's completely mutual because when we look and talk to, you know, people who know more than us, we know they know more than us. They've been doing this for a lot longer than us. You know what yeah. I mean? And, and we may be talented. Even we may just have general life experience. Right. Like, we may know? be talented. We may be, we may have like, we know how to play every note on the guitar. That doesn't matter. Right. Like, like that's, that's just the talent part. There's so much more to life to making everything work out. And you know, when, when you guys talk to us and you actually listen to what we're saying and you have knowledge that we obviously don't have an experience we don't have and you'll give it to us. It's so, it feels so good. Like that's why we love talking to you, you know? So vice versa. It's like, a full circle. Well, then, great. well, when you and when you find those things, that's where your that's where your mentors come from. Uh, you both know I'm a I'm a Freemason, and right. um, Freemasonry to me was a couple different things. One was I wanted the Brotherhood. I thought it was a great uh, a great thing. I'm a kind of a universalist on religion, and I wanted to study a lot of the esoterica that is contained in that body. Okay. And the yeah. third thing was, was was charity, give back. I was lucky a lot ways life and a lot in a lot of ways, so I wanted to give back. But one of the biggest things I saw was men that were older than me. And they looked like they were more selfless. They looked like that right. they were wise and they, they, they looked at like they were really, really trying to do the right thing and be the kind of people that I wanted to be. And so I said, why wouldn't? And, and they're standing there and so are your mentors and so are these people in the business saying, take it from me. Right. Take it from me. I've, I've, I've collected it all my life. Right. Give me something to do with it. You are a great vessel. And that's where your, that's where your mentors, and mentors are going to come from and the mm -hmm. people will push you forward. Isn't if you differentiate yourself in this way, then they pick you. And I think that is the, the personal That's, skills. That is the way you present yourself, real, genuine, humble, hardworking, got great talent. And then the, the fact of the matter is, is you're a product. Right. You're just like right. anything else. There are plenty, plenty of great products out there that are delivered to you by either bad actors or just not a nice company or, 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 or difficult and things like that. Right. That, 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 can, that can be in a way. Right. I, that's so well said. Um, the the mentor passing it down to the to the student you know what i mean we'll say the young the younger version that's trying to figure out what their thing is going to be right because we don't even know when you're young you don't know exactly where you're going to be but you know you're working on it and then when people help you and they mentor you along the way they're passing on what they've learned they've taken their whole life to to build on right like whatever they've gotten to right then they pass that knowledge on to you you could take it and better the whatever it be like because obviously mentor doesn't just go for music it goes for any any walk of life like uh, you can, if you're a shoemaker, you know what I mean? Like somebody can teach you how to make a shoe. Now the world knows, the world continues to know how to make shoes the right way, you know, and what, what that guy's mm -hmm. learned his whole life. You know right. what I mean? What so wouldn't Bruce so... McKagan do for you guys if he could? Right. If he was in the spot, right? right? It, it gives him absolute pleasure because he has a, such a great respect for you. Um, I, I think that, uh, I think that that's really, really key. Yeah. When you're developing yourself, you're, you're, you're looking for that help uh, from others and um, it, it's just going to serve. And the, the, the other part of it is, is um, very simple things. Dallas, you've always said, how is it you remember everybody's name? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I don't know. I, I guess you walk around and you travel and you're in hotels and you're in restaurants and you're dealing with people all the time and things like that. You start to look at their name tags or you try to remember their name and address them in that way. Right. But your service gets better. You're not treating them like an object. Right. And if you're observing the places and, and doing these little things, you'll find your whole your whole journey through it yes. is better. It's way better. Yeah. How about not be the asshole customer exactly. that they remember exactly. after their day is done? Because do, they get plenty of those. Matt, Matt, I'm I'm slowly learning this. Like my my, I guess I'll say my early like adult like serious life. I'm like my late twenties. I'm thirty now. So I'm like my late twenties. I'll say I started figuring this out. When you just react to people in a friendly way, even if they're having a bad day and they're not like you, you notice a change in them, and you're just like, wow. That didn't like take much. Yeah. If I would have just been a regular customer, did and not been uh like mean or rude or anything, if I'd just been a regular customer, just gave him my order, uh whatever, you know, whatever whoever I'm dealing with, and then gave it to him plainly and didn't try to like uh to make him feel better, smile, whatever, whatever I could do to make him feel better at the same time while I'm getting my order in, all of a sudden your whole experience changes and you've changed them a little bit too. And yes. and I think it, it doesn't take much to do that. It's like so small and and like, if you just get That's used to doing that thinking. all the time, you get it's, so great at it. It's so many like easy little things, yeah. you know, it's like, why you're, wouldn't you do them? Yeah. You're in queue. 
or the or the or the um, flight attendant comes or just about to exactly. do that, and you right. say, "How are you doing today?" Right. Instead of and just stop, I'll take this. I'll take that. I'll, you know, like you stop and wait for them to answer. Exactly. They might roll their eyes and say, "Wow, it's, yeah, yeah. it's a shit show." Or right. Might, or, and, and you and and I'm um, really and then you there's some sympathy there. Exactly. Um, and really um, listen when they say, and then you can give them some yes. kind of answer. Obviously, you want to be brief. She's got shit to do. Yes. You be brief, and you yes. help her feel better about her day, and then you get your order. And guess what? Your order is probably going to be priority. She's going to make sure you get your order the right, right the way. You know, just because you made her feel better, like. And why not? Like, why not do it? I think that's the main thing. Yeah. And sometimes maybe you're in a hurry and you got to move things around sure, and you got to sure. be a little aggressive in life. Sure. And, and then there are times where you don't. Right. And you maybe give somebody else that break. You cannot believe that one of the other things I wanted to mention to you is that there, there's a, uh, they talk about all the stories, of the people who made it and who they met. And in those monta- moments, these spontaneous, synchronistic moments. Yes. That part of whatever this weave of life is, um, whether it's, um, you know, predestiny or you're driving your own, I think it's a combination is about the best I've been able to come up with in my life. Right. There's a book out there called, um, uh, by a guy named Deepak Chopra. And, um, and if I could say, I guess, I guess he kind of bubble gums up the Vedic philosophies. Um, and he's got a place out in Carlsbad and people study him in a gazillion books, mm-hmm. but there's one he wrote, Um, I think he wrote the seven laws of spiritual success. That was his breakout. But there's one he wrote after that's called the spontaneous fulfillment of desire. And what he talks about is how physics and and karmic things interplay. And you you find that if you treat the world and people in a certain way um, and then forget that you're doing it, for the quid pro quo payback, right? You cannot be surprised. You, you, you will, you will, you will be so surprised how lucky you get, you feel. Yeah. And you, and no, everything around you seems to, seems I'm, to line just, up better. I'm just telling you, you'll hold the door. You say, okay, right. these people are elderly and you don't pass them by. You just take a second, you do something Absolutely. decent and you start to do that in your life in all the areas of that you are. And it's not you, hard. It's not hard. Um, it's hard to, well, it is hard because you, because we're all jammed. We're all trying to get someplace. We're all trying. I think to, it can be hard, but I, I think you right. If you uh, if you just like look around, like it's part of being aware. It's part of Situational observing. Awareness. Yes, That's just what, yeah. and see yeah. what's happening around you, and you're not just in your phone all the time or whatever whatever your your distraction may be. Right in your own little sphere. If you just give yourself like literally like just pay attention to what's happening around you, you'll be surprised at how uh, willing people are to talk to you to help you. Like it's it's crazy actually surprisingly I I guess we live in North Carolina we live in a pretty um hospitable place I would say people are very hospitable here It is it Charlotte is. Charlotte's a little more uh it you is. know city light living so it's not as yeah, bad and you could make the same case for being up in boston philadelphia that's true and, and, yeah and uh, new york there are definitely uh, you just got to do it faster exactly <laughs> <laughs> they're in a hurry no ser- a seriously compression, they have it? they really do have a fast life lifestyle i've been to chicago i've been to new york i've been to jersey i've been to a few different places just for concerts or whatever and you just bump into people you start talking to people you know and they have a fast-paced lifestyle. Well, population density in those yes, areas yields yes. more pressure on everything. Exactly. Uh, car traffic, this thing. You got to fight hard for a parking spot at Costco. Yeah. You yeah. fight for everything a little bit harder. Yeah, that's uh, true. It's like it's just and, a. And so it, it it causes that kind of. Uh, yeah. So many of them come down here and are like, "Wow, everything's so slow." Yeah. You talk slow. Yeah. You move slow. The, the you know. first years I was down here, it would it's drive hard. it would it's drive hard. me nuts, and then you then you gear back a little bit and try not to be too much of an asshole. That's right. That's right. You have and, to realize it really helps you personally. To it do does that. actually. That's I think that might have helped me. Me too. Like just being being here in this place that's more a little more lackadaisy, more, you know, just relax. Everybody relax. Like that's kind of how they feel it feels like, you know. Yeah. Anyways. Uh, I, I guess uh, when I mentioned that book, just the last thing so I can close that on you. Okay. And um it, it really tries how it, tr- it really tries hard to connect that karmic energy that you're that you're carrying when you and how you treat people. Yeah. And, and it and it really, really does come back. But it also tells you something very key uh, about so one of the dumb examples is, is how does the bird on the one side of the flock and the bird on the all the way the other side of the flock know how to make that turn instantaneously right. or, a, or a school of fish? Yeah. There's a non-local communication type of thing that he tries to get at. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm not doing it any justice. Uh-huh. Uh, but I'm sure it's really heady and hard. The point of the matter is, is there's, there's a lot of synchronicity in, in life. Right. If, you're, if you feel the need that you want to talk to this person, Mm -hmm. there may be something that you're supposed to share and give to each other. Right. You don't know why. Right. You drive down the roads. How do you get to your destination? You follow street signs, right? Yeah. It's a matter of fact, all of the great musicians, artists, and people like that, they talk about how that they were channeled, maybe putting up their antenna in the astral plane where 
the art and the gift and that creative idea mm -hmm. spark came from. You guys do this all the time. Right. It's the same place when you're navigating in your life. If you're paying attention with your antenna up, not so blocked up by right. all the traffic noise and all the things that are there, yes. then you're then you're course through it. It's a hard thing Matt, to this, do. This all really the time. makes a lot of sense to me, man. It's like a hard it's thing crazy. To all it's the crazy time. hearing you say this because I've never, I've never, I don't know, I don't, I don't know if I like run in the right circles to talk, like to know people to talk to about this stuff with. But I've kind of felt, I've always felt like this weird things happen. Like if you've ever th thought about, here's an easy way to like kind of just get break into this thinking, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, if you've ever thought about trace it back to how you met somebody. And then you, and then you like, maybe you know them for your whole like life you and now. Like you me, Matt. <laughs> exactly. Dallas, this is, I was going to say this actually. It's like, when you realize, when you, when you put all the, the events together that got you to actually meeting this person, and then you have, now you have like this long-term relationship, obviously not a, you know, obviously everything's not a sexual relationship, but a relationship. Oh, ours is. Yeah, of course. Our, me and Dallas is. <laughs> I'm leaving. But, but anyways. I'm out of here. But yeah. others may not be. <laughs> but anyways, my, my whole point of saying this is if you trace it back, you realize like, wow, that was always going to happen, I think. You yeah. know, and, and then when I said that one thing, that triggered this whole spiral of events. Or when I did this one thing, for me, it was emailing Dallas and uh, Ashen at the time and uh, getting in touch with them. And then we met at a show. We hit it off. We all had Steel Panther, a and very then similar, similar Within the past thinking. probably three months from to, from now, like really recently, right, right. I, we found out that we were both at so many of the same shows exactly. just over the years. And it could have happened at any of yeah. those instances. He, yeah. he calls that, this author and other people have studied it too, but they call it a synchro, dest synchro destiny, I think it is. And and so when you, what he says is, is that everything is, um, um, you're basically trying to bring into um, fruition? True, true life, bring to fruition. Some sort of what what you have is something supposed in your mind. to happen? A, well, right, you have something in your mind. Okay, so you start to think about it. Right. So then it's like casting a bunch of stones into a pond. It's like Dude. a rippling database query. Oh. So that the universe starts to bring this information to you, and yes. you run into a guy. Hey, you know, I got this guitar for sale that I, that you were looking for. Oh my and god! So, and, and it's and it happens so odd. It doesn't happen instantaneously. No. But 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 what, there's a delay in it. But when you start to yeah. put your attention and energy on a subject, I don't yes. care if you want to go, grow a garden, right, or if you want to build a concept album, things are going to start flying at you because you've put your conscious Matt. energy into that, and it oh. comes back. I've so, and it is I've a said program, this so much. and it works. I've said this so much. If you dwell on something, it's not, and I say dwelling, but like yep. yeah, a lot of time that's a bad, it's got negative connotations. But what I mean by dwelling is if you have something on your mind and you really feel compelled like to do this, like it's some, for some reason, like this is on your mind all the time. And, and that, I don't know if you get to choose it. I'm not sure. You find it, and then it, or it finds you, whatever. Then it becomes, it's not an obsession. I wouldn't say because obsession is like to a point where it like hurts you. Um, but I would say it's something that's just always on your mind and, and it happens. Stuff Matt, starts happening Matt, around a, Matt, you. Matt, it's a simple chain. Your dreams drive your intent. Your right. intent drives your actions. Right. Your actions manifest that thing. That is it. And, 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 and the delay thing you're talking about is what people miss a lot. They'll try something and they don't try it long enough or they don't give it its real, they don't give it its real time of day or real, uh, what's that phrase? Well, the, well, real... the, the big problem is the conversion from intent to action. Right. And that's one of the things. That's one of the things I, I love about you guys so much. You you uh, you, you you act. Yeah, we're doing work it. Work at it and every we, and we've day. Talked about, we've talked about the concept of people who are afraid to act. There's obviously people who they get so overwhelmed by how, what they can do, how they can do it, right. where they where, and they don't even know where to start. So they think about it, think about it, think about it, and then they don't. They never get it started. You know, or they come up with a million reasons why they can't do it. Or and me that's and Dallas kind of are, the, are it's pushers. The, it's my new favorite quote: perfection, perfection. What is it? Perfectionism. Leads to procrastination, leads to paralysis. Exactly, <laughs> paralysis is the th is the term. Yeah, they call it paralysis by analysis. That's yeah. it. Yes, yeah. yeah. right? that's so, it. When when is good enough better than perfect? Exactly. Right? Right. Um, and 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 that's the and that's the chain of events. That's why I've always been really really confident and pretty sure that you guys are gonna make it. Um, I don't know exactly what it is yet. Um, uh, well, but but by our term of making it, we've talked about this before. Making it for us is making a living, doing what we want to do. So oh, if that yeah. is trust me, that is making it. If that's making it, you know what I mean. Then I feel like we're gonna make it too because I'm determined to um, to put my best foot forward in doing this. I set my life up to literally only do this. I mean, I have other. Obviously, I'm skilled. I, I'm a fabricator. I'm. I have ways to make money, obviously. <laughs> but um, but this is what I want to do with my life, and making it to me would be changing over to make all my money from music. If that's the yeah, way, if yeah. that's the way I could do it. Jesus, you really need to read this book, I think, because I want thing, to. One, I, one of the things he says there is is that where your where a personal skill set that you happen to have meets. Um, a personal desire or right. you know happiness right. in doing that thing. Right. And the third component that this is odd. The third component is 
does it serve your fellow mankind? Is it a gift? To it some- has to pay you. It has to somehow. Well, no, does keep it serve you- others? Right, but it- that's where that's where that's where the rubber meets it the road. That's the perfect. In right. a way, in a way that they'll they'll um, back you up on it. They'll um, affirm you, reaffirm you, be like, "Yeah, we like this, and we'll we'll support you to make sure that you can do this." And that's literally just the act of buying somebody's music. You know what I mean? Like if you think about it, like what you're doing in exchange, you're affirming that that person is doing something you like. You're willing to help them and support them do it to do it more. Absolutely. That is uh, that's all. Give the, me give me good music. It fills my soul. Exactly, and that's what I'm I'm determined to do. I I'm determined to make uh, other people feel the way my favorite musicians have made me feel, which is super important to me. I hold it so closely exactly. to the, the strength that listening to like music that I love gives me. Like it seriously does like push me to be better in all ways. Like if on your worst day, your favorite song can turn your, you know, your day around or a song that you've never heard of can turn your day around too. You know what I mean? I love that. You know, I want to be able to do that for other people. I think that's, and you know, you, you're doing, if it. I can get, if I can get, uh, if I can get paid to just do that and, and I'll do my best to serve people, you know, in, in that way, then I, I would love to just do that. I wouldn't, I don't want to go to metal shops and cut my fingers anymore and have to wait mm-hmm. a week to play guitar or wait two weeks to play guitar. You know what I mean? It just seems like no, it's, everybody they're, in they're the world, clashing. The everybody's two. searching for that thing. That thing right. That they, they, they do, to do what they love and to, and to be compensated for it. Exactly. Um, it, it's, it, that's a, that is, that is the Holy grail. Yeah. Brother. I tell yeah. you that right now. Cause there's a, there's a gazillion of us out there. Um, yeah. that are doing a job and maybe we like the job and right. I, I do, I do love my sure. work and everything like that, but boy, it sure, I look over the fence at being a, uh, a, a musical a musician, performer and, right. and a writer. Right. And I say, gee, which comes with its own amount of work. It's not like that's a, a the so we're doing the it anyway on the side. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well, it's a lot. We have of no fun. delusions about any kind it's of commercial of success fun, about yeah. our stuff. I just love making music. So you, we're going to keep doing that. I, it's we, so much fun. Like the, the camaraderie with your friends, yes. the, all of it. I mean, like, think about where I don't, I think about all the time what I'd be doing if I wasn't making music. I don't golfing. know what it would be. Yeah, I don't know what it would <laughs> no, be. No, yeah, it would be. Golf. Yeah, I don't know. It's what, just so yeah. much time that I don't even know what I'd put that into. It'd probably get me into trouble, to be honest. Using that time to just like whatever th- something came into my you know my way, and I was like, sure, let's go do it because I didn't have. Oh no, I got band practice. Oh no, I got to you know I got to go record. I got to do this podcast. It keeps me so busy that it's, it keeps me out of trouble. You know. Mm-hmm. In my week, when there's so many other things and so many other masters to serve, um, it's the thing I look forward to most. That's so cool, right? You know, That's the best. Seeing my kids, my lady cooking, yeah, drinking some yes. beer or playing music. These are, I mean, these are the absolutely things I love being with my friends. That's that you is guys so, are so cool. lucky. And uh, <laughs> yeah. you, you um, I feel lucky about that, man. That's the, I mean, all the all the stress and all the trouble that it's worth. I, I really do enjoy that moment that you get to this way. This is why I do it, and you got to kind of remember it like this. This is what it's all for. The hard work makes its own luck. Or, and then listening to your album when it's all done, you know what I mean? You know, oh. we all know that. Everybody in this feeling knows, or everybody in this room knows that feeling when you're done with your product. And whether or not it's perfect or not, this is the product. And you know what? It's I'm usually pretty proud of it. Obviously, otherwise I wouldn't be. You mm-hmm. know. Yeah. Did you guys have? I've heard. Oh, I've heard your stuff. I've been hearing it for years. I yeah. Mean, I mean, there's no. Likewise. Likewise. Talent isn't the problem. Talent, <laughs> talent. I wouldn't say talent isn't the problem. It's, it's all this other stuff for you to carve out that uh, role course, for yourself in life. Of course. And I, the and networking I'm, and the and the putting yourself in the right yep. a place. And, and I think the dedication of it all is is the, the real key. Um, what's what is it? Uh, luck is uh skill or no luck is, meets opportunity yes that's yeah. it yes yeah. which is so good because you have to be ready when that moment comes you if you're not living the life that's gonna let you be ready when the time comes when that moment comes like well yeah i got this slot on this this tour you know it'd be really good we need a good act or whatever if you don't have the actor if you're not ready for that you're not gonna get it so how do you get ready for something you practice you work your way to the you work your way to that moment you know what i mean you have to get there the long well, way. well, here's a here's a stupid thing. I'm going to take these CDs from the LA Maybe that I have. Mm-hmm. That Dallas is um and uh, in, in group yep. guys are working with. I'm going to go, Maybe go down to the Lake Wiley Children's Charity. There'll be hundreds and hundreds of people there. Oh, Four nice. bands down at the down at uh, Papa Doc's or T Bones on Lake Wiley. Oh today. yeah, yeah, that is. And Papa I'm going to give out now, some of your it? CDs. Hell yeah! Nice. You'll probably end up playing this thing next year. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Right? Or playing some or something to come up. I, I've been want, but I wanted some of my other friends to hear. Yes. Uh, hear hear what the, hear what these guys can do and everything like that. It's amazing. So I'm, I love that I'm interested EP. in your success like you are. And I, 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 I want to help. And yes, that's I, why I wanted these. So, I told, I told Dallas the same thing that I am a hundred percent behind, you know, him and he, I know he's behind me. Obviously yeah. he's been a huge part of my project and I've been a small part of his, but I'm a hundred percent in for pr- promoting him. And I've, I've taken that CD Dallas that I had, you know, how many people that, that hand that's seen as far as hands, 
Mm-mm. It's gone from person to person, and it's just because of it's natural like tape trading. In the dude, 80s. listen to this. <laughs> listen, it's not tape trading exactly, but it's just like the CDs just making it from hand to hand because it's like, yeah. check this out. This is yeah. my friend's friend's band, or you know, if yeah, if yeah. they know you, then they're That's like, awesome. this is Dallas's band. So I really love that, and I love hearing back about it too. Like it's like, so I've been listening to that EP, Dallas man. I was like, that, that thing's awesome. That's awesome. Like Drew, per, like uh, for just a you know example, Drew listened to it for weeks or whatever and, and just was like and i forgot who he ended it off to but he ended up to somebody else and it went to somebody else so i should probably get some more too from you and uh just hand them the, out to people. those, those, those my 10 truck. right there are, the, are it we sold out so we oh have, there you we go have well then let matt take them and then i'll we have um, more uh, i'll give you I'll more on the way hell yeah dude. but i don't thank know you, when they're you. gonna be here well the uh i play this in my truck for my lady and we're driving down the road and i, and I do this you, to call, you guys called me <laughs> i do the, i do this to her all the time and i and i did it with dallas's first album yes. as well and, I, and if you get me some of yours i'll do it with i you will dude i will totally, yeah. totally. and i don't tell her yeah and she goes yeah you know, it's like a music quiz game and things like that she's getting really good she can oh hear, good she can hear different people it's like look i knew that was them and she's really happy about it anyway so i'm playing this in the truck one day and she's like who was that and I'm like, he never played them for me before. I'm like, that's that's, uh, that's Dallas's band, the LA Maybe. She's like, get out of here. <laughs> Which I, know, I think she said, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Bullshit. And I'm like, no, no, no lie. I pulled, I, I pulled, I pulled the, the sleeve out. She said, oh my god. I love. And, she, and we called him immediately and said, she said, you, she, it blew her. Yeah. Away. Oh yeah. You it called me. Away. You called me, and I was like, oh, Matt's calling me just to talk, whatever. Yeah. And I answered, and you go, uh, holy shit. And then yeah, I hear, yeah. I hear her in the background go, what the. Fuck? Man, <laughs> <laughs> that's so cool. Yeah, no, it, it just, it just. Um, that's what makes it worth it, man. Those that, moments make it worth it. Like, I'm. That's so cool. Isn't that's it? so cool. Especially, you know, uh, look, look at it. Right, right now we're playing for each other, fellow right. musicians. Right. Like, hey, what do you think of it? You know, I mean, that's your, your biggest source of and your biggest source of feedback and inspiration. Yes. Is that your other people who actually are engaged with music, yes. know a thing or two about music, yes. understand how hard it was. hundred uh, percent. Listen to the sound and said, okay, that, that came out good and, and can actually, uh, he's yawning again. And, and uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And Matt, we just talked about this last week. Yep. Matt, we just talked about this last week. I want to, I wanted to run this by you because I bet you'll, you'll dig this. You know that uh, something in the water saying when uh, a whole bunch of bands out of Seattle, start breaking all of a sudden and it's like oh man this whole scene in seattle or uh all these bands in yeah, la nirvana, all these nirvana bands in new, york, kills metal. in new york well well all the grunge scene but you know yeah. new york had its own scene uh you know la obviously like there's some obvious ones texas is having kind of a thing right now nashville's got its own thing right and yet it seems like there's something in the water that's i don't i don't that's a funny saying and it's it's cool to say or whatever but we were talking about last week um i think that's a lot to do with bands pushing each other and being inspired by each other and be like like it, you know, just it's incestuous. Uh, yeah, and and it's like, oh wow, did you see what they're doing? And it's like we got to step up our game. So that band right. steps so up. So Pearl Jam's so out, Pearl Jam's out bands, there. Andrew yes. Woods, Andrew Wood with Mother Love Bone. Yes. He's, you know, he goes. He got story. changed. And they're all got, and they're all playing right. the same clubs and they're Sound seeing Garden. each other and they're playing with each other. And then they They've, go, man, they got this. Like we need to step our game up. And they're, they're exchanging dude, members. No, no yes. better, no better example of that than the the '90s Seattle grunge scene because sure. they they were literally like Temple of the Dog, right? Where it's just like all of them on the same album. And that's what that saying they use. Exactly. saying the most i feel like that's something in the water thing and like la they, has that they're all going around there. somebody who, whose mother was it who had the guitar school was it randy rose's mother or was it uh, uh it might have been yeah yeah so and then, that's and, crazy and then eddie know. van halen's at the school right or, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a big incestuous uh group fuck yeah, yeah. It, well but it, it breeds uh a knowledge and an uh and also a competition like a friendly competition i think it's important to keep it friendly not to cut down your competitors because when you cut down your competitors it's like it's cheating obviously it's like it's like, well, instead of rising above and, and, and yeah. trying to be better than them, we took our competition down it, by, you know, exactly. sabotaging or whatever it yeah, may be. Yeah. I've run into this personally over open to a, a open for a band. And because they were threatened by us, they sabotaged us. And I, you know, and that's not confirmed completely. You I don't have be, any like, you should be but uh, it feels, flattered. Honestly, I kind of was at the time. I took like, it hey, as man, flattery. It I, I didn't guys. get Thank into a so fight much, with them or know? anything. I didn't argue with them. They asked me to be their bassist afterwards. They had, they were having a problem with their bassist. He showed up, no bass, no pick, no, had nothing. He showed up to their gig or whatever. And, uh, and I was like, wow, their bass has really got, the, got his shit together, you know? And I was kind of, we're the opener and I'm looking at their shit, you know? And then, so they sabotage us, cut the power in the middle of our set in the beginning. And they try to act like it was That's because like the of the neon gig, lights. You they, guys act, lost power. they act like it was because of the neon <laughs> lights on the wall, the beer lights or whatever. And I was like, yeah, yeah I'm sure that's that happens Maybe every time somebody plays here. Yeah, the power goes out because the beer lights. You know what I mean? So anyways, n- neither here nor there. I'm pretty sure they sabotaged us because we were killing it. The people were out dancing. They were the local heroes uh, at this place. They're, literally, this is their like home club. 
And uh, so we were doing well, and they shut it off. You just got to cheer the other guys on. You got to push people forward. Yeah, and then, so they asked me to be their bass player, which is so yeah. funny. But I, I agree, Matt. I am not for cutting people down. Got to be. I was out there in the when I was out in the Northwest for a while. When I lived out there, the 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 the, the craft beer scene was really jumping up. And right. Out west, it was right. pretty darn big. So I, I because of the business I was in, I was a member of the Northwest, you know, uh, craft beer association. And these guys would have these conferences and they would be all the competitors in the local area and they'd all come to these conferences and there wasn't water or coffee on the table. There was beer. beer craft and they beer. would brew their special stuff. Hey, what do you think about this? Mm -hmm. I brewed this one. I made this one with, yep. with, with these different things. And Always tweaking their recipes. And, and they would all talk about, you know, wacky processes, shit, yeast, yeast propagation sure, and sure. the beer. Well, I know. So it was, a lot of it was over my head, but the fact that they kept pushing each other and they would, and they would, sample each other's beer and these are all brewers from all over the place. that's how like, things get better that's how things evolve and yeah. and uh and progress uh my my roommate uh ex-roommate actually currently my roommate's true but my just recently ex-roommate uh was a brewmaster at several breweries and he designs the recipes for these brewers and uh they they hire him yeah, to come and song. set up their plant set up that's their, their song what's that that's their song what do you mean that person is doing the same thing. You oh, exactly. Oh, hundred percent. He's a genius. Like I, I, when I talk to him about it, he like blows my mind every time about what he's, and now he's working on seltzeries. You know how yeah. seltzers are big now? Yeah. He's doing that stuff. And he's just such a smart guy at it that, I mean, it makes sense that he would just be, yeah. so anyways, that's how he makes and he, his And living. he plays your stuff and goes, dang, I wish I could play guitar. Oh, and sure. Sing yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. And sure. You know? he, he's a huge fan of, of, of my music and just, I, we're friends, you know, so we're, we're all in everything together, but yeah, I was listening to a podcast the other day and they, the guy summed up what you guys are saying. You don't have competitors. You have collaborators, right? That's a super so, good way of looking at that's it. That's a concise, everybody concise could, way to, everybody could be a part of what you're doing yep. in some way. If you, you know, if you like what they're doing, you could figure out a way to incorporate them. And like then that other podcast, a friend. you know what I'm talking about? Right. Like I've, I've been trying to get him on like, our show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it was, yeah. A, it was a, I think it was a mistake of him to come out like that in the beginning and make, establish yeah. it like it was some kind of competition, cutthroat yeah. competition even. And, uh, you know, I think we'd probably be okay with being collaborated. This you know? other rock related, uh, podcast in Charlotte sent us a press release that basically said, uh, is Charlotte big enough for two rock podcasts? We're like, yeah, it's a podcast. It's available <laughs> to the entire world. Like, right. It's not about Charlotte at all. People could listen to both. People can listen yeah. to one or the other, whichever one. If you were, you'd probably have to listen to 20 episodes to even figure out we were in Charlotte. Right. right. That's probably true. We never Even though we try it, to make well, it known. Well, we try to make bring it, it up. Known. Well, like you said, North Carolina today. But right, right. Other than that, I mean. We don't talk about it all the time. We don't talk about where we are usually. It doesn't matter, though. Our music, yeah. is, music is happening everywhere. And uh, we try to collaborate ideas, too, yeah. with people across the you know country. Like, they'll tell us that they're you know, in California doing this or whatever. And then we get to hear their story, you know, or you know, all yeah. that. Yep. That's why it's so important, I think, that to do a podcast is to open the communication. Every story that we have of some kind of crazy night or some inc incident that happened or whatever could be something to help the next person, you know? Yeah. Um, you want to shift gears into the end of this topic? Hell yeah. So Steel Panther released a new album. Yep. What are your thoughts on it, Matt? Uh, well, I can't speak on it completely because I haven't listened to the whole thing. I've only heard... Uh, the album's called Heavy Metal Rules. I've heard the singles on the record. Uh, the last one being... The latest one being... Uh, God's a pussy. No, fuck every. Uh, it's, oh, yeah, it was God's, God's pussy. pussy. That, what is oh, that okay. pedal you have? Uh, that's the pussy melter. Pussy melter. Yes, yes. You know what? You know what's messed genius. up? Genius. As as hilarious and crazy as it is, it's actually a phenomenal pedal. Yeah, like, right. It's like a really good. Dallas product. put a demo of it on Instagram. Actually, yeah, it's a really it's, good. It's so good. Well, yeah. it's got a tall order. It's so good, like, dude. It's amazing, and it's, I love how, like how it came about the marketing of it. You know how it happened, right? The whole scheme. Okay, so check it no, real quick. Steel Panther fascinates me. Right, right here, real, real quick. Really here's, a, here's the marketing yes. genius Geniuses. behind that, Matt. They were gonna have a uh, pedal company that TC Electronics was down to make this pedal for them. So that's what's like, you know, what's in particular in regular Steel Panther style. We'll call it the Pussy Melter. It's gonna make the girls go crazy, right? Pussy Melter. Uh, then the PC, uh, lesbians and the, you know, whatever the LGBT, I don't know who fucking got the feminists, everybody, right. Got all pissed off at them and started, you know, basically shaming them and trying to throw them under the bus. CC electronics dropped it and they were like, okay, we won't do it. Sorry about that. You know, well, Steel Panther said, no, nah, we want it. We're going to do it. Like they did it themselves. They had the pedal made right. by they somebody had, like, else. Some they they it, yeah, no, they like, subcontracted and, and it to And sold them. the shit out I, of I them, Matt. Yeah, it was sold right. out. Sold the shit bucks. out of them. It took like nine months to get to me. But it's it was amazing. And, and Dallas, I, bought I one. got it. I got it. I wanted to buy the delay too, but I was a little short on funds at the time. But because I know it would be a great pedal, but I bought it. What do they call the delay pedal? I forget. What is it called? I Damn can't it. remember. Oh, <laughs> oh it might have been Poontang Boomerang. That's it. That was <laughs> yeah. it. The boomerang, yeah. right? And that the yeah. song they did. So they did it with um, uh, Cheap Trick or the uh, Rick Nielsen. Rick from Nielsen, Cheap really? Trick. He's on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think it's that. a. 
Who Tang Boomerang? Is that the one he's on? Sorry, I might be getting confused. I hope I'm not wrong. They have right. so many guest stars, but none of them are listed. Like, right. Uh, like I know, they don't listed, really put them know? on featuring this like, yeah, person, right? Say, you know. Because it would get long, too. They have a lot of, like, they have Corey on, Taylor's like, on the first Corey record, Taylor, M. Shadows. Um, all these people are on the on the Chad first. Chad Kroger's and, on. Right, on the second record. He, it won't suck itself. Yeah, it won't suck itself, dude. <laughs> God, they're Dane so Cook funny. Dane Cook does the intro. You yeah, know that Yeah, Dane Cook does the intro. I know. It's all detuned and stuff, but it's still, you can tell it's Dane Cook. Because the way he talks and the things he says, you're like, that's Dane Cook. You don't know it's him. Until you know it's him. Until you know it's him, like, and then oh, you're yeah, like, that's oh, I can't unhear it. Yeah. yeah, that's him. Yeah, that's so uh, good. But the new Steel Panther album. Tell me what you think because I've not listened thing. yet. Okay, I'm, it's not my favorite at all. Okay, and the one before it wasn't my favorite. Right. I just think they've uh, been. I don't know if they're getting tired of like the shtick. Right. Because like, how long can you keep? Like, that's, are they going to do true. this for thirty years? Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. Don't they say? I've heard. I've heard lots of uh, bands talk about you this. You become you become a character of yourself, and you have a choice to either change. Or lean into it and just be that character, and it feels disingenuous. But you're still—that's uh, you, where they're at. I think. You know what I mean? I, I wonder if that's what they're going through. Maybe that was a Josh Holm who said that. Oh yeah, Josh Homme or yeah, Holm, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, from, from I'm Queens. A huge Queens. Yeah, yeah I think it was too, him man. who said that. That you become a character of yourself, so you have to yes. you have to evolve, evolve, change. Uh, and, and, and you know, and Metallica said it in the '80s when they yep. did those t- uh, when they did Load and Reload. Right, like, right. Cut their hair and all that. Well, can't we grow up, please? Right, right. Can't we just can't we do something different <laughs> right, now? Right. They, we they, did Metallica. We did it for you. We did the thrash metal thing for you. Now we want to evolve and do something else. And that's it. Panthers wrong in with a that. unique space though, because they are a character already. All right, right. So this is not who these. Dudes actually are. Right. This is all a, 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 a act. Of course, you know? of course, yeah. And, and, it's, and like, how do you? You've created the act. The act is successful. Does right. the act then evolve? Right. right. I would think you just do it until you realize we're done, and then you stop. Right. And, um. Here's the thing, too. And I, I know a lot they've of people got to be getting close to that. You know right. what? Well, you know, like whether or not they're done, whatever. They can always. I think they'll always sell records. No matter what, people always check it out and listen yeah. to it and laugh, have a laugh, even if it's not like the first and second records, which I think are all. Like I just think it's genius. I don't know what it is Records about those one, two, first and three were flawless. What three two is? Yeah. Every single well, that's what song. I was going to ask you. I, I I don't know them. I don't know their work that well. Uh, I I know they're tremendous musicians and their shtick is funny and of all course, that kind of right. stuff. And they and they kind of you know they just take it to the next level. They have so a, I, I respect a great it. Time I appreciate it. it, but I'm not a big. I'm a, not a huge student. Right. If what if I if I need to get the real taste of what the real Steel Panther is, just start of the first album and just listen listen through. Yeah, I would say start at the first album and, and the listen, second listen album and in order, and you'll, and you'll see. <laughs> right. You'll see maybe no, that this it, is album number five, not counting the Lexi's Garage, right? Five or six, I think. Might this is six, six if you count Lexi's Garage. Okay, right? okay, then yeah. Okay. But that was just a live album. Right, so right. So I think it. this is five. But um, so what else I was saying, I guess, is that uh, I remember I saw the interview with uh, Michael Starr and somebody said, you know, like, if you guys wrote a, a serious song, like, just without all the grossness and the you know the obscene obscenities of it and all that and you just wrote like a, a rock song or whatever you guys would probably be like even more famous like people would just like take you seriously and stuff and uh michael Stark goes, what are you talking about he goes let's think about the 80s like what were they all doing they were all doing these innuendo jokes or whatever we're kind of just being more like uh that open about it and, that is and we're having part fun. of steel panther than than i feel like so few people realize the entire thing the fact that they're clubbing you over the exactly. head with these sexual metaphors is a spoof on 80s hair metal. Exactly. That's because, what they were doing. Because that's what, you know, it was Molly Carrello's people were doing, but they were being just it, idiots about exactly. it. But Steel Panther's being like, look how stupid these guys were. Right, right. We're going to do it in an even funnier way. Exactly. Like, you it's know almost I mean? like making an obnoxious mocking of it. You know what I mean? Like, exactly. But, it, but it's also, it's really fun. And when you realize that the music is really good. And the music's better talented. than it ever was in the yeah. 80s. <laughs> exactly. And they're so talented. Uh, Satchel was a guitar player he, uh, for a lot of different projects and stuff like that never really made it big until steel panther kind of broke but was but he's a, worked a with teacher Paul at, he was at, at MI. mi yeah so he's a, a guitar like genius really and like, there's videos of him back in the the guitar work on this new album is phenomenal yeah there's some there's some that. videos back on youtube of, of satchel when he was young like real young and like mm-hmm. you could tell he's just a shredding boss and uh it's awesome to watch you're just like wow like it's yeah. crappy quality because it's probably with a handheld like one, one of those, those big, flips or yeah, something. yeah exactly but uh dude he just shredded whatever you wanted to do whoever you wanted to he's like oh you, you want to do that yes yeah. yes it's really good so that's where you realize like man that kid was he was just always an amazing guitar player never hit the band that was gonna do it until steel panther i think he but was who in the fight like with he's Rob the chief Halford. songwriter and yes. everything for steel panther yes. so who would have thought he had all those clever lyrics right, and right. rhymes and well thoughts. uh there's another band that he does i think it's um it's like the yard birds or thorn birds i think it's what it's called and he's mm-hmm. the singer guitar player for that band so that's all his writing too and uh, i think sticks is in that band as well was this uh, before or is this now now i, I mean I, I think it's a side project it's a yeah. side project so it's periodic right but um it's really good and you're like wow and the, the lyrics are very similar to steel panther style not as uh 
I wouldn't say they're as ballsy because are the they trying to be funny or is it like legit? It's funny. It's funny. Um, okay. but it's alternative rock. It's not. Okay. Oh, it's gotcha, not gotcha. metal. It's not. It's but he's the guitar player singer for it. It's really awesome. I think you should check it out. To the Thornbirds. I'm gonna add um, that. Yeah, you'll love that, dude. Um, if you had any more in there, and that's where you realize Tool album. That's when you realize though that Satchel's a big part of Steel Panthers <laughs> lyrics too, and and the writing of it all. You know, you're like, oh yeah, he's a songwriter. He gets it. You know, Probably. I've had the. Probably leads you right into your next topic. You're adding another album now. You're yeah, right, right. You're piling, you're piling something. We were new. just talking about before the show that Dallas has got a list of albums that he he's meaning to listen to. Like basically, he buys them or 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 saves them. I guess on Apple yeah, Music, Apple Music yeah. and uh, puts some puts them in the queue basically to listen to. Here's some stuff I got to check out. This this album is says 2004. Okay, so it's been a while. I remember. I mean, I found out about that like Did shortly after I found songs about it. Familiar, school. all the same. Internet but Explorer. If there's ones with stars on them, I think those are the either the singles or like Internet the ones Explorer, that are most popular. Internet Explorer, Teenage Tramp. Internet stuff. Explorer is funny. Yeah. Okay, so these, this is the right. This is definitely okay. the right one. Gotcha. That's what um, I wanted to know. Yeah, I could tell by the album cover. Sorry, I didn't know what we were trying to figure yeah, out. Yeah, but, but I, I I had um shifting topics like Cohen just said. Um, I was I was driving around the other day and I was thinking like, oh man, I I haven't even gotten to the Tool album yet. Right. I, I since have. Right. I've listened to it a bunch, but um. I had I realized how far down I had to scroll to get to it in my recently added, and yeah. it's like two weeks old. <laughs> like there's probably fifteen, no, probably more like thirty albums in between. Yeah, there's been a bunch of cool stuff it's coming out lately. Stuff. Is it all new stuff? Or it's stuff not all. Like, you're, you're I've, added added all iron, like I've some... added all of Iron Maiden's discography. Yeah. Right, like right. right kind of I, yeah, I'm dude. the Ancient Mariner. I saw you had on there. That's an amazing record, dude. I mean, I, I, I've like no Iron Maiden's catalog, from right, top right. to bottom. Yeah. But I just realized it was not in my Apple Music. Right, so I was like, oh, I want right. to hear the Wicker Man from Rock and Rio 2004 yeah, album. Yeah. So I was like, added all those, you know. Cool, cool. Oh, I saw and them then, open up with Power Slave. The Power oh, Slave yeah. album, they opened up for a priest doing Screaming for Vengeance at the Meadowlands. And uh, we it's went hard to, to believe Iron Maiden opened for anyone ever. You know? I, I, I did. I know. Um, and uh, and, I, so and I tell you, that was, an, that was an amazing show. Those two albums are, those two albums are yes, you know, phenomenal. Obviously. And, um, I like and, peace and of we, mind. We were it. there, and the, you know, this was the Meadowlands jersey. We right. had tailgating the just like as if it was a giant game. We were tailgating on. after the show. Everyone was just it was just so bad shit. Um, me and Big Don went to a lot of places, and this guy's guy a monster. So yep. we we never really worried about get, having any trouble or things right, like right. that. And uh, um, <laughs> we were out in the parking lot after the show, and they're lighting cars on fires, and, and it was Whoa. like a riot. And we looked at each other and said. We should get the fuck out. Yeah, of here. and that's not something we would normally say to each other. Right, right. Not really worried <laughs> like, usually. Like, we're joining the fondo. Like this doesn't scare me. We've seen, we've seen this, we've seen this mayhem before. Yeah. This one we said, this is enough. Let's get out of here. Yeah, this is enough to say. Let's go. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> riots, riots are scary things. It just was escalating. It had that. Oh yeah. Had that energy. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's only a matter of time before something big happens. Something real unexpected happens. You know, that yeah. stuff's crazy. Yeah, for sure. Um, we had a f- couple requests to show you guys some clips or, or teasers of the concept album. So I think we're going to do that in just a second. Um, yes. but we showed Matt Cullen here right before we started, we showed him a couple clips of it and I wanted to kind of get your thoughts on what you've heard so far. Cause Matt and I've described it a few times, but yeah, the, the concept album, um, I, I like it. I'm a, a fan of concept albums. Uh, of course you asked me, what is it? What comes to my mind? And I, and I, and I think the who quadrophenia, I think of, uh, I think of many others. You think of, um, uh, you know, physical graffiti, you think, right. of, uh, you think of some of the great stuff from, from years past, but I also think of the single album, you know, that's maybe not a double whole giant thing. You know, you look at, um, Alice Cooper's welcome to my nightmare. It yes. was all similarly themed and things like that. I, I love back in the day, how you could put on an album, and just play right through it right. because the music was that good. Yeah, you know, the Pink Floyd albums are this way. You know what you know what I'm talking about. But I also like that this the the the, the theme runs through it. Operation Mind Crime is one that we kicked around as another um is another great one. So one of the I, best. I'm excited. I'm excited for this. I heard. Um, I, I think the, the the market's growing growing with it. Dream Theater's been doing these things. You guys have uh, what I heard is amazing work. I know you got um, more to do and everything like that. That one song was really cool. It was that like was really, really spooky. Talented, yeah. I immediately saw a scary movie scene. <laughs> Unsettling yes. was the word. Would, that's what I you were going it, for, yeah. and that's what you got. It yeah. was, um, but it was re- it was really great. I'm I'm excited for you. This will be this will be a lot of fun. Yeah, this is fun. It was a good cool. experiment idea. I mean, uh, it's been some work that we you know like definitely probably looked past a little bit because we were excited about it. Mm-hmm. Dallas has been putting some extra time in this though, and it's uh, it's really coming together quick now and. Uh, I'm yeah. excited. It's been mulling around in our ideas. It's kind of that thing, Matt, we were talking about. It's been in our head. It's this idea. We got these ideas. We throw them around. Me and Dallas text about it every once in a while. 
and it's we got a file where we, we share ideas and stuff like that. Um, okay, and so you said it had a long dormant period. What would you say besides? Oh, hey, what do we? What hey, do we? Our, concept- hey, our, hey, our goal was twenty nineteen right. to finish this. So you're obviously being driven well, a little March bit. March or something. But sometimes the delay. Yes. What, what something happened? There In, was a yes. There was a something that sparked. Yeah. Oh the, shit! It's almost due. Okay. Yeah. That, but all, did a piece of information, a really good idea, a dream you had. I forgot. Yeah. Somebody it was talk, partly. Uh, it was literally like right after the dream. The so check. This, so check this out. This is there interesting to say about this concept album. Um, the dream that you had, you said, Hey, we should do a concept album. Or somebody said, we should do a concept. I might've said, I don't know, whatever. We thought it'd be cool. Yeah, we remember. could easily do it. We thought we just maybe got done doing the cover. I do of remember talking about that dream though. Yeah, I still so, remember that. It's so the only dream I vividly remember. At the very same time you were like, well, I just had this weird dream and, or I had this dream. I, I, you told me the story about it. And, um, I was like, Oh, well that would make a good concept album there, right there. But then we also still gave it an idea, uh, up for the opportunity for the others. fans yeah. for the fans to choose something different in case they didn't you know whatever what if everybody hated the idea of a ghost con, you know uh possession idea of mm-hmm. a concept album right well, we did a vote between four different ideas we came up with a few different like apocalypse i forget some other stuff right and uh the fans naturally chose ghost possession so i was like well it was meant to be then that giles mm-hmm. had this dream we both wanted to do a concept album this would be a, a a nice story to tell like when he told me what the dream was like i was like we could do a concept record on that really easily. It has a setup, it has a climax, it has the whole thing. It has uh, just the the fact that it's um, so fantasy. Like it could, mm-hmm. you could really do what you want with it. You know, yeah. even though it has that dream that it, that guides the whole story and the premise. Like we can kind of have fun with it. You know, I like For it. Sure. So we had the idea in the beginning of the year, February maybe, March, February, somewhere something in there. like that. Yeah. And then uh, we decided we'd have it due December thirty first. Otherwise, it would never get done. Yes. And then. Um, Got cracking on like the first song. Yeah. Pre- it, pretty much finished it, which is the clip you heard. One of the clips you heard right. was from the first song. And then nothing until like late July, August. Right. August, actually. Yeah, we had a long dormant so period. So just in the past month, it was things, most of the But it wasn't like nothing happened. Things have their natural right. timelines. Yes. Uh, sometimes um, my father would always say to me, you know, um, some things just happen on their own time, even though that you want to be, you know, you, you want to force the issue and everything like that. And you're trying to, to, to make right. Some, right. Some, sometimes you'd have to wait for it to come. Exactly. Exactly. I feel like that's, I, I'm certain of it. I feel like that's, that's kind of the thing too. Like ideas, all these things that you come up with these big ideas, they don't happen overnight. Big ideas don't happen overnight. What happens is you get that big idea and then you keep it in your head and mulls around and you, things start coming available to you, and you, when you see that leading to your your big idea, then it 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 gravitates. You get it. You go get that right. Like you you make that happen. So it's all happening around you. This idea we talk about it all the time as far as passing ideas back to each other, uh, and just like really, oh yeah, then we could build up to this, do this. We'll bring it down right here. Dallas has one that's completely instrumental. That's gonna, it's just the all idea, the idea mood the and all feeling, and it's and that's a totally you know that was an mm-hmm. idea that happened six months into the project right yeah. if we finished the project in a month that six months into it you wouldn't have had that idea so that's yeah. why you have to let it breathe and really mull it this over. dish is different your idea was a crock pot and you're right. standing over it trying to figure out what to throw in exactly it. and it's gonna it's gonna and it's gonna cook more slowly exactly but but, but as it but as we talked about before a lot of projects they don't look like they're forming you're not seeing all the progress, but exactly. that doesn't mean it isn't there. That's exactly okay? right. And, yeah. and then all of a sudden it, it manifests itself. So it's, um, uh, I'm excited. I'm excited to hear it. Me too. So let's play him a little clip, Dallas. Um, yep. Matt, Matt and listen to this little teaser here. We, we all listen to it. And I think this is a good one uh, for you guys. So this is, uh, we'll end the show with this. Yeah. We'll end the show with this. We'll just fade out. Um, this is, um, before you do that, Dallas, okay. you said something about this dream. Oh yeah, it was. Uh, I think oh. I've described it on the podcast before, but it was. Um, it was. It's. It doesn't sound as scary as it as it felt. Right. And, it's, and it Something was. A, it can't. was like. A, it wasn't like a whole story. It was a. It was a vignette of like right. a bigger picture. But basically, I was in. I, I think I wasn't even there. It was just kind of like I was watching a scene. Yeah. And it was like a like a corporate office cubicles, right? And this being ghost creepy thing that was definitely like bipedal. It looked humanoid, maybe was floating down the center of the cubicles and was like capturing these people as it went by. Like it was possessing them as it went by and like taking their souls basically. Now that was the boss. That's the, yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's right. But that was a real, that, yeah, that this was a real, uh, that's what this, another was, metaphor this was a real it. commentary on that's why I don't work in corporate a America. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what, what sticks out to me more than anything is at the very end when he finishes, he stands there for a second and then he does this weird, like, yeah, like, 
shout. So weird. And it was the creepiest fucking thing I've ever seen, ever right. seen or heard. Ever. Sounds like something from Nintendo almost. It like does. A, right. That's what like made it Japanese, so scary. Like Japanese, like kind of. Like imagine like a murderer like killing a family of six and then being like, yeah. Like, how scary is that? Right. Like, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> The, the thing I wanted to hit on that was is, uh, is it dreams. So they say there's all these, um, so many, so many levels of sleep, right? Mm -hmm. And over sure. the years, I've, I've yeah. read a bunch of books on dreams and dream interpretation yeah. and things like that. So you look at your, your fears and your desires and all sorts of things that are represented by, if you look at, if you look at objects or people in your dreams, you will right. find that they represent things that maybe you're scared of, things that you're excited by. Right. And, and they represent all sorts of different stuff. Because um, it's all in your head. It's all that's where dreams it is, come but, from. Well, so it's you're, coming. You're in this level of sleep. They call it the astral plane. It's right. timeless, and there's a lot of creative energy there. That's where your antenna is supposed to go. Right. So if you want to put your dreams to work for you, they say try to recognize when you're in your dream. And there are times when you might say, "Oh, I'm dreaming." Right. Okay. So this lucid is fun. dreaming. Lucid yes. Dreaming, yeah. I, I've tried to hide. Like the people say, they have dreams that they're flying. Right. All right, so I have actually in my life had moments, not often, but you, where you know you're in a dream and you're flying and you say, hey, I'm going to dream of flying. I want to fly somewhere. And you right. direct it. And you tell it now. You're, yes. Now you get to go to a place that you've never been. Correct. Through a dream. Correct. Dude, my uh, friend and, was and just telling me about this. So crazy. I haven't seen my friend in forever. And he was just telling me he had to stop doing that because he was doing it so much that he would go to sleep. And even if even if he just closed his eyes for a little bit, he got like really good at getting to that into that astral plane. Practice. It does. And he got good at it. He figured out how to do it. It was a pinching technique. He'd say that was the one that got him. Like when he would start pinching himself all the time, he'd pinch himself while he's awake. No, he is awake. He just pinched himself though and get used to doing it on a timer almost, right? This was his technique to getting in. I wasn't even talking to the mic. Sorry about that. But so he got used to doing that and then would figure out when, when he pinched himself just regularly on cue, you know, pinch himself right. all the time. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm not awake right now. I didn't feel that. Like, I don't feel that. So then he knew he was in, in a dream. Yeah. And then he start, he's then he, after doing that for a while, he got really good at it. And he said he had to stop doing it because he would just close his eyes. If he was a little tired, close his eyes. He would be all of a sudden in a fucking dream. And, and he said he got scary. He started like uh, losing grip on what was like actually happening and what he was dreaming. Like memories. Think about if you're remembering all these dreams. It's like you have twice as many memories as a normal person. Think about it. Because you now you're remembering time when you're asleep, too. You got all these memories of a time you did this, memory of yeah, time you like, did that. Yeah, it's like that time we were at the beach, man. We're like, I've never been yeah, to the beach. What are you talking, talking about, about? We never went to the beach, so it gets a little you know, <laughs> yeah. slippery. Right, so, but, but the so idea is that you it. put it to work for you. Yes, uh, I like ways. the so idea. They, so they say one of the things that you would do is that before you go to bed, if there's, some, there's a problem that you're grinding on, like, how am I going to solve this right. problem? How am I going to get past this thing? I need to do this. Or, or something that you're desiring. I need to know more about that. Right. I don't know shit about yes. that uh, thing. And uh, how do I, how do I, get I feel that all, so all the time. You, you, you contemplatively and, you know, uh, specifically meditatively right. talk to yourself just before you go to sleep mm -hmm. and you almost put yourself into that gear. Yes. And a lot of times the engine in your dream will, will take follow, over, will follow it down that yes. course. And, and cause you're, you're looking I've, for the answer. I had that idea so evening. young, Matt. I had this idea so young. I, I literally wanted to do something really bad. And I thought, well, what if I just started thinking about that really hard right before I go to sleep and I'll dream about it. And it happened. And then I was like, oh, but I don't practice it all the time. To be honest, I don't have a lot of dreams anymore. Um, I might smoke too much of that marijuana. I'm not My sure. My dreaming from the drinking is a cut down. Ah, uh, yes. Yep. Same thing. <laughs> the idea is that everything we, if we're fantasizing about something, whatever that thing is. It'll take over in your dream. Your head is still to... churning. Your, your brain is still always thinking about that, which I think is important. I really think that if you want something in life, you have to think about it. And you have to be, you have to be like proactive about it. So proactive. Like if you're not doing anything to get there, you're never going to get there. Yeah. Like, and, and sometimes it feels like you're stagnant. It feels like you're not going anywhere, but you, if you just keep pushing, you'll go there. So let's I have play a recurring dream. Um, it's so, it's so like anxiety based, but it's, oh. I realized it's like a popular dream with a bunch of different people, Okay, but it's where, um, it's the same thing every time I'm in college, it's the end of the semester and I, re and I have the final exam and I realized I haven't gone to class once. Oh, wow. It's just like, oh, shit. Like, yeah. Or like, or like Moment the semester ends truth. and you're like, oh, wait, I had this class I forgot I had. I never even went to it. That is your like, anxiety you know? of yeah. not being prepared, bro. That is, I've nope. had that feeling right there. No. Well, that, well that's a piece of it. That but feeling, it's, but that feeling it, when you, it, when it, you it, have it, something to do and you're not ready to do it is the scariest feeling in the, the whole the, world. That's, that's a piece of the whole thing. But the central, the central theme of it, uh, it uh, um, I wouldn't call it an archetype because we use archetypes in so many different ways. It's fear of failure. Feel of failure. You're right. Or just being in that moment of failure, the moment of that, that moment that you're in, that you're supposed to be there. Everybody's there. You're like, this is what you've agreed to do. 
like a song, like a show you've you've prepared none for the songs, and you go to that show, and now you have to now it has yeah. to here do, it is moment of truth, like it, yeah. whether whether or not you know the songs or not, yeah. this show's happening. It has and to you know do with I mean? expectations, exactly. your own of yourself, right, in that, particular, right, others around you. But think about yeah, and think about though the no preparation factor of that that you wouldn't have practice at all so you were completely in the deep end of the pool and you don't know how to swim you don't have a fucking floating device right. you're you're going down fast like you don't know how to swim in fact you might even have lead shoes on uh the that feeling though of uh absolute helplessness and it's because of you it's your fault like you didn't prep you prep enough or you didn't you know so we'll throw that in there so so now you're in that deep end of the pool yeah. this is your dream and you feel yeah. like you're sinking and you don't know how to swim and right. you have lead shoes right what do the lead shoes represent the uh maybe just the quickness of how fast things happen i don't know what do they represent shoes would represent things that are dragging you down they could right. be external to you they right. could be your bandmate they could sure. be a partner reasons they you got be, to this point reasons you could be a bad hat right right man it's so, crazy so look into your dreams center on the objects and assign values to them in your life just yeah and, and just in, in that one if you if you're not maybe that good at interpreting your dreams because it probably takes practice i'm sure like i've, I've for one don't have very good practice in this but uh, it, i see the value in it for sure but if you uh just take away the basic of that the fact that you don't prepare the day is going to come when you're going to have to face that when you don't mm -hmm. prepare like that's that's the obvious thing you know what i mean the very the very basics of that but then like you said there's so many other things you can study if you really think about that dream it's like what does that represent what do the lead shoes represent what does that you know all of it it's so yeah. you know just pay attention put your antenna up i think that should be the the message sure. of the day well, the problem keep is your is antenna you'll, up. You'll, you'll put that you'll put that dream into your programming before right. you go to bed right and right. then you'll get the dream and you're like well that didn't give it to me right are you sure right you gotta pay attention are you Dig sure deeper that's right absolutely absolutely let's leave it with that keep your antenna up ladies and gentlemen yeah um that's awesome any closing thoughts now let's play them the, the track here or a clip of the track yes so this is uh you're gonna hear part of i believe the ending of uh track number two which at this moment in time is titled awakening part one yep so uh, here we go, and awesome. we will see you guys next week. Matt Cullen, thanks so much for being on the show. Had fun, guys. Thank, Thank you, Matt. All. That was we'll awesome. See you guys later. See ya.